Well, hey there, it's Sandy Alnock with another Create in Color video for MFT Stamps. And today I am going to be coloring the Peace, Love, and Paws puppies. I love that they have so many dogs in their stamp sets at MFT because I have two dogs. And inevitably, two of whatever the dogs are end up looking like mine. So I have a golden and I have a black and white mix. She's part Great Pyrenees and part... Anatolian Shepherd and then the other part is maybe deer because she jumps and runs so profusely fast and high. So these two on the right are going to look like my pups and then the other is going to be a dog we met recently when we were at the dog park. So I am coloring the center dog to be a little bit golden retriever-ish and adding some shadows in any of the areas where sections of the dog join. That's kind of the way that I approach things. I know a lot of people do coloring where the shadows are all around the outside edge of everything and then it works its way to the middle. If you end up doing that and you're having trouble with all of your tones ending up the same, you end up losing all of the dimension that you created, try doing it with the lighting coming from a specific place, whether it's right on top or to the left or to the right. And the reason is because if you have to take that eighth of an inch or whatever of dark color on the outside and bring it all the way in, and then that's a quarter of an inch, by the time you get to the middle, all that highlight is lost. So I like to have each of the shapes have a real shadow and a real highlight to them, and that makes it a whole lot easier to blend. So don't make things hard for yourself in that kind of a way. So this dog is as close to my dog in the drawings of dogs in the stamp set. There's three dogs and four cats in the set. And this one is as close to my Vienna as I could get. She's much bigger than her, her little brother, but we'll, we'll make do with this. <laughs> She's got two big spots, black spots on her eyes and two black ears. And apparently she likes to wear hats. So there we go. The rest of her body is white, so I'm going to deal with that later and add some gray shadows to it. And this little dog is just reminding me of a little dog that they met recently at the park and played with. They sometimes play with dogs and sometimes not. My golden had an incident. We, we call it the incident <laughs> with a, a big dog a couple of years ago. It was two years ago, I think. And he's never quite gotten over it. If he runs into a big stocky dog that looks anything like the dog that he got in the fight with, he just gets really nervous. But boy, I tell you, we get little dogs around and he just lights up. Especially nowadays, I think he's getting to the point where he's less on edge, less ready for a fight. So he found this little white dog and he just thought this was the best little white dog ever. Like, okay, if that's going to be your new best friend, then so be it. So that's why it's a little white dog. But of course, you can color them in any kinds of colors that you want to match your dogs or the dogs of your recipient, which is always fun. Since they are wearing their hats, I'm going to put them outside. You could make an indoor scene with them, but I decided they should be outside playing in the snow. And yes, those are shadows on the snow. If you look at snow, well, we can't look at snow now. It's not winter yet. I know it's early for snow cards. <laughs> But if you look at snow and shadows on it, you will find there are actually good dark shadows on snow. So I use two colors to create that. I'm going to do a rather simple background on this one. And just making a bunch of brush strokes going upward from the horizon line. And you could make a straight horizon. I like to make a hillside because it feels more like a dog park if, <laughs> if there's hills for them to run and play on. And I'm just flicking upward from the base of where the forest is that I'm picturing out there. And depending on how juicy your marker is, you may end up with like flicky tips. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. That they get soft at the top like mine. Or you may need to do some work on them. This color is a B60. And it's not a marker people tend to use very much or even buy. But I find that it's got a little purplish in it. It's just kind of a bare, barely blue-violet, but it's really soft. It's really light. And it's not light in terms of like a B00 that's way bright. 
but it's it's duller but still light, if that makes any sense. So I love using that when I'm doing backgrounds like this. And then the trees, I am going to make in gray. Yes, gray trees. Why am I doing that? Because I want all that color to be in the middle, right where the dogs are. That's the focus of the picture. I want the rest of it to be supporting characters. These are the the B actors on the page, and I don't really want to draw too much attention to them. And if I were to make green trees, I would end up with all kinds of attention drawn to them, them taking away from my little doggies. So I'm just making kind of some branches on them, and they don't look really great. And I kind of did that deliberately because I know a lot of people struggle with drawing trees. I do have some classes that have, you know, the drawing of trees in them. There's actually a free holiday backgrounds class that has a bunch of that in it. Uh, but I also have a trick for you to fix some of that or to, shall we say, soften it. Because one of the reasons it looks harsh and weird right now is because you have that medium gray against white. But look what happens when you have the medium gray against a light gray. It softens all those edges. So now the edges don't look so contrasty on that dark or the, the medium gray tree. And this lighter gray tree takes away the sting of that. And I'm even just going to do a quick cover of that empty area in between on that, that tree to just soften it. And then I'm going to go one gray lighter, or not one gray lighter, a couple grays lighter, to make another set of trees. And you can keep doing that to hide any of the harsh edges because that'll soften them and they'll look a lot better and I think you'll be happier with them. And then I had to add for each of my dogs, a little path, how they got to the place where they were posed for their picture. Not that any of them is going to come in through one path. If you've ever walked dogs in the snow, that would be circular paths all over the place. But I made a little trail for each one of them as they walked up to the photo spot. And then the only thing left is to add the snow. And when I add snow, I use a Signo Uniball gel pen. And this one works for me. I don't know why people struggle with theirs very much, but people do, and it's it's a thing. But I don't have any trouble with it. I don't press really hard, because if I press really hard, the, the ink just doesn't come out of the pen. So I've got lots of giant snowflakes on here to make it a really fun, happy, snowy card. Warm and fuzzy wishes. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click the like button. All the supplies are listed over on the blog and all that good stuff as always. And I will see you guys next month. Bye-bye.